Hey guys, welcome back. Um, Cliff here. Thanks for uh, joining me. Uh, today I was going to try and do a video uh, replacing the bearings and truing the wheels on a stock Harbor Freight 1x30. Should be a fairly easy video. I'm using uh, new LED lights, new recording, audio equipment, editing software. And we're going to try doing a voiceover on this. Uh, thank you guys for joining me and let's get to it. Okay, jumping right in here. Just start by removing the set screw on the top, holding the upper idler in place. I seem to have got pretty lucky on this one. The idler just popped right out. I'll take it over here to the vise, bang on it for a while with a hammer. I used a rubber mallet, try not to damage it. Uh, the bearing in the whole thing came out as one assembly. I ended up putting a socket back in to knock the whole thing out. Try not to damage the bearing. Here you can see the new bearing compared to the old one, exact same inner and outer diameters. I went ahead and used a rubber mallet and supported it on the inner race to avoid damaging it. And I just used the vise to press fit it into place. Attached the uh, snap ring using my snap ring pliers. Check for fit. I'm going to go ahead and remove the back assembly here. And this is where it gets a little tricky. This is the spring tensioner. It does not come out this way. It comes out from the back side over here. Remove the little E-clip. I got really lucky, it was so rusted that uh, the spring didn't shoot the washer off into the uh, driveway. This thing is just gross, it's so rusted up. We'll get it cleaned up though. Basically just gonna remove all these little parts and then we'll get to the tricky bit. The reason why it seems like I stopped working on the uh, idler is uh, the pivot bolt in the back. You need to remove the motor to be able to get the lower pivot bolt out. Here I am taking it out. When I reinstall it, I'll switch it around so that you can just have the nut on the back and the bolt goes through. And that will allow us to do things in the future without having to take the motor off. Now this tension tracker assembly has a roll pin and that's what allows the uh, shaft of the idler roller to pivot forward and backward. And so I had to get that pin out. Of course, that's the one tool I can't find in my 
box so I tried to use an Allen wrench beat on it for a little bit I was able to get it out throw that in the bucket pull this thing apart let's get it cleaned up a little bit Okay, here I got my idle roller mounted in my drill press. I'm using a, a Sharpie marker uh, to kind of see where this thing's at. And you can see the lines aren't going all the way around. This thing is completely out of true. And I'll spend quite a little bit of time. I just went nice and slow. I used a uh, file and light pressure. And I tried to keep the same contour and keep the file moving as I worked and then I'll stop here in a minute and we'll take a look and you'll see just how much more needs to be done. As you can see based on these close-up shots I think truing the wheels is even more important than replacing the bearings. It's the easiest thing and probably the number one thing I'd re recommend to do to this unit. Just used a straight edge and uh, tried to flatten off just a little bit right at the uh, apex of the uh, the crown of the roller. And then I went ahead and uh, switched over and hit it with a little 320 grit. Same sort of thing. Um, one little spot I didn't get, but I'll just leave that. I think the sandpaper will take that out. It's 10 times better than it was. Okay, here we're going to go ahead and do the second wheel. Um, one thing to note, I noticed the bearings seem like they weren't free spinning and that's why I'm able to just have them chucked up in the drill press without having it uh, secured. Probably should have went with a bolt and some fender washers and really got them tight, but um, it will come back later that we'll see. Um, I think these bearings just don't have enough free spin in them and I'm probably going to end up trying to find something a little different anyways but for reference this is uh, still valid and this is the part where it's really hard for me to take something all the way apart and not clean it up and make it look a little nicer than when I started BAM
forget why I had to take the motor back off, but it had something to do with that idler tension assembly in the back. And while I had it off, I remembered I wanted to make a, uh, uh, this is uh, a cutting board or was a cutting board. <laughs> and I requisitioned it from the kitchen area. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, make a, uh, it makes a really good non uh, slick surface. It's uh, like Teflon or something like that. So I'll make a little spacer out of this and then attach it back on. I put the bolt coming through from inside. Um, first I gotta get this um, roll pin back in place, our new polished shaft and um, a couple things like that and we'll be good to go. You'll see me squeezing this tension assembly a whole bunch. This was, it's not actually a Harbor Freight, it's a Delta. Um, and it was a really old machine. Uh, that's why it was covered in rust and everything. But um, the tension spring on this thing was extra heavy duty and a little bit too heavy duty in my opinion. I keep squeezing it, trying to loosen it up, but it doesn't seem to help much. Reattaching the uh, tensioner wheel. And pop it into place, put the snap ring on, and go on, probably remount the motor next, and we'll be getting close to the finish. almost forgot we got to true up the main drive roller. Um, not sure if this is the best way or uh, the worst way, but it's what I had. I had some uh, carving tools, used it basically as a gouge. Carefully held it in place. I would have liked the uh, support to be a little closer, but I kept the tool angled down and a firm grip on the back and just kept going with it. And this, this was just as badly out of true, if not worse, than the others. This is after I did it for quite a little while and you can still see that part of the wheel isn't even being hit by the, uh, the carving tools. Um, 
so I sharpened them on the other machine and went back to it for quite a little bit longer. Here's another shot of the same thing. Um, you see we're hitting there and then there's whole sections of the wheel where uh, there wasn't even, it's this, these wheels aren't round. Coming into the finish here, no project's complete without a little uh, decals on it, make it look all super sporty. The thing you should be able to notice is it's still loud because it's a high speed motor, but it's running much smoother and without vibration. Thanks everybody for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you guys for the next one. Have a great day.